One, two. Well, welcome, everybody. Welcome to this afternoon's beautiful vision uh, time that we're going to have as we're going to hear from Rudolf and Sonia as they're going to share everything that the Lord's put on their hearts uh, with regards to France. And so I'm uh, Piri, uh, and I'm going to be leading us in worship tonight. So we've got a room full of beautiful people. Um, so why don't you stand? I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to get uh, worshiping together. And so if you've got Facebook, uh, if you're watching live, why don't you just start a watch body share? Let's get as many people um, involved as we can, and we know that God's going to do some beautiful, beautiful work, and so it's going to be precious. So I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to get started. There we go. So Father, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you, God, that your name is the name above every other name. And Lord, we thank you that as we worship you and as we press into your presence, you will just flood this place in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen.
offering tonight.
He is the only one that is worthy. He is the only one. There is none besides Him. There's no one like Jesus. And all my devotion and all my affection I pour at the feet of Jesus. I pour at the feet of Jesus.
Just lift up your hands right now where you are. Just for the next few minutes, whether you're in this room, whether you're watching on Facebook, whether you're watching from France, whether you're watching from other parts of the world, just lift up your hands. He is worthy of all worship. He is worthy of all praise. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Siara Jesus, we just we just thank you for your presence right now, God. I just thank you, God, that you are holy, God. You are worthy, Jesus. We just lift you up, God. We lift up your name. We thank you that we can celebrate the name of Jesus yet tonight, God. We lift up your name. You are worthy. You are holy. You are mighty, God, Lord. We just worship you, Lord. We worship you. You're King of kings, the Lord of lords. There's no other name that's above every other name. Jesus, Jesus. I pray that every person just watching on live stream will just encounter you, God. They will encounter Jesus. The name, the real person of who Jesus is. The mighty name of Jesus. We just thank you, God, for who you are, Lord. We thank you that you're the King of kings. And every knee will bow and confess that you are Jesus. Welcome everyone on live stream and in the crowd, yeah, and we just, we thank you for joining tonight to celebrate a beautiful, beautiful couple that we love and we honor and we adore so much, Rudolf, Sonia and their beautiful kids. 
and they're just amazing and we just we just want to celebrate them tonight and all what God's going to do for them and you know the biggest thing Matthew 28 when God speaks he commands us to go to go into all the nations and make disciples and that's what this this family's decided and Jesus just wants our yes and this family they've said yes to him yes to the nation of France and we so excited to see what God's going to do in and through them well if you're watching online we've got an awesome video we're going to share with you and so just stay tuned while we're busy sitting around and sorting a few things for those of you that are watching online this is for you. There we go. Well, thank you guys again for everybody joining us. We want to welcome everybody from France joining us today. Uh, my name is Pastor Piri, and uh, welcome to everybody in the room. Uh, you can't see it on live stream, but we've got some beautiful people in this room that are all a part of Rudolf and Sonia's life and a part of uh, the local body here. And uh, we're so excited. I'm just going to invite Pastor Maxine and uh, Chief Apostle Levi. Levi's making his pastoral debut today. Say hi, Levi. See, he's a natural. He's a natural. Well, um, obviously the kids are at the back now, but it is absolutely our privilege today to 
as pastors of this uh, church, Relentless Pursuit Ministries, to to do a, a sort of a vision cast, but also to hear the heart of one of the families in our church, Rudolph and Sonia Weekly. And, and we want to invite you guys up. We want to pray for you, and then we're going to hand over to Sonia. So please come stand here in front. So obviously there, uh, you can use that mic, yes, if you want to, love. So come stand here in front of us. Rudolph is so tall. Stand on the ground. No, stand on the ground so I can look super tall. Oh, my gosh, they're tall, hey? Lord Jesus, growth in the feet. And so... Um, yeah, it is really our privilege just to, to share uh, with them. And so part of the, the calling and the prophetic mandate of our church, Relentless Pursuit Ministries, um, is that the Lord has called us to be an apostolic sending center, to send people into the nations. And so uh, when we met Rudolf and Sonia, they couldn't stop talking about the beautiful nation of France. And so we know that God has called them into that nation. And it is our privilege and our responsibility as an apostolic house to cover them, send them, make sure their marriage survives, the kids survive, all of the beautiful things. And so we just want to bless them. I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Maxine just to pray over them. And then we're going to hand over to them. And uh, I know that God's going God's gonna to show up today and show off. So I'm very excited to hear the word. And so, Pastor Maxine, please go for it. Yeah, Lord Jesus, we just thank you um, for this amazing family, Lord. And we just pray, God, that you would just come, that you've called them for such a time as yeah, this, God. You, Isaiah 60, arise and shine, for your light has come, and the come glory on. of the Lord has risen upon you. This yeah. is your time to shine. This is your time to rise up and not back down. This is your time to proclaim, boldly proclaim the boss. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And we just thank you, God, for more, more and abundance, Lord. Abundance, Lord Jesus, that they wouldn't, they would look left and right and they would just see your hand in everything, God. Your hand upon the people. I thank you for the harvest in France, Lord. We thank you for the souls that will be impacted throughout Europe, Lord. And Jesus, we just thank you that you've anointed their lips to speak forth. And even the children will speak and proclaim the name of the Lord. And we thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I'm going to first hand over to Sonia. Sonia, are you going first? Sonia's going first. She's prepared about 400 pages for you guys. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, and so tomorrow uh, morning at our Sunday service, we are going to be ordaining them into the fivefold ministry. As a church, we believe that God has called us um, to preach the gospel. And so we're going to be basically just confirming what heaven is saying over them, that they are called into the fivefold ministry for the work of the ministry and the preaching of the gospel. And so that's going to happen tomorrow. So it's going to be a lot of fun. You ready? No. Not ready? <laughs> Nervous? Come on, you're going to do great. Here you go. Let's welcome Sonia, guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't really know where to start, but um, yeah, I just just want to start at the beginning. So um, I very often try to think how I got it to this place in my life and how it all happened. And there's been so many significant th things that happened um, in the past um, 20 years in my life um, with regards to what God has um, called me to. And I think it's important to know what's happened in my life and what's happened in Rudolph's life and how that's come together. Because I do believe that God has put us together for a very, very specific reason. And um, I just want to share some of those significant um, moments in our life with you. Um, so um, I can actually see um, God's calling in my life since from a very young age. Um, I remember... Um, I w <laughs> it's... Um, I just I grew up in a home where my mom and dad loved the Lord, and um, they really tr brought me up in a in a in a place where we we seek the Lord's face. And um, I had the opportunity of being um, baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was at the age of six, um, speaking in tongues. And it wasn't something that anyone went looking for; it just happened. And ever since, um, I never I really just always knew that Jesus was with me. And ever since I can remember. Um, the scripture, Ephesians 3 verse 8 would come to mind. And I never really knew what it meant, but I always, would, it was underlined in my Bible. And every time I thought I had to read the Bible, this verse just kept popping up, popping up. And um, I want to, um, 
throughout um, what I'm going to say is I just want to emphasize a few of those things there. But I want to start with verse 3, verse 8. It's where Paul says, To me, who am le- less than the least of all the saints, his grace was given me that I pre- preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And I just feel that um, we can all, in some sense, identify with that. We some um, I was speaking to Rudolph today. We all might feel inferior. We all might feel um, unworthy of the call of God. But like Rudolph said today, he chose Peter to build his church on, and he was a fisherman. So um, doesn't matter who you are. If you've if you've got a call or if you've got a heart for something, go for it. And uh, and so, thank you. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, ever since I can remember, I've always had a love for the French language. It's just been beautiful, and um, I never really knew where it came from. I just remember at school, it was something I always wanted to do, but I never did it. It's one of those things that never happened, but... um, but there's always just been a design. I've always just been, even lately, been drawn to French people. We've just met so many French people over the couple of years. And it's just been, we didn't go looking for it. It really just happened. I don't know any, except for a, a German friend or two. We don't know any other, the amount of French people we know in France compared to the rest of Europe. It's insane. But, um, so... Um, the, the next verse that stands out in um, Ephesians is where it says that that in whom we have boldness and, and access with confidence through faith in him. So we have boldness and faith to go and do what God has um, told us to do and just to respond to the call. But like I said um, earlier, um, because of this love for the language, I never really knew how it fitted in. But then when I met Rudolph, it just all started. I think the first words he said to me was, I think he wanted to scare me away or um, grab my heart. He said, I've got a heart for the, for the nation of France. That was one of the first things he said to me. And it was almost like it just ignited inside of me. So for the first time, I had a purpose and I knew where this was going somewhere. I didn't have this... The, the love for the language for nothing. nothing. It was all coming together at some point. Um, and then the f- third part of this verse that stands out for me is in verse, um, I think verse nine, 17, that, that Christ will dwell in our hearts through faith, that you would be rooted and grounded in love. And I really just feel there's such an essence to be rooted and grounded. And when you're rooted and grounded, to just go and shine the light of Jesus. So those are the... Th- three aspects that really just stand out for me while I'm just going with my story in between. So um, so when I met Rudolph and everything just started making sense, before we were married, um, we had a prophetic word in 2008 um, where um, for the first time we had a prophetic word that brought everything together and it just said that we're going to a foreign nation. It wasn't very specific, but because we already knew that it was France in some way, It was very specific that it just said, God is sending you um, into a foreign nation. So we always knew at the back of our heads that it would be France. And then um, exactly 10 years later, fast forward to 2018, after having children and living in Cape Town, we had a very, very, very specific um, prophetic word um, that just confirmed that it was the nation of France. And I think that really made a big impact in our lives. Because, um, wow, it's just been <laughs> a, a crazy ride. Okay, but then, um, like I said previously, we've always just been drawn to French people. And there have been so many crazy connections that we've made when we haven't even tried looking for it. Um, we even had a prophetic word at some point that all our connections will come to us. We don't have to go to them. And that's just been so evident since, um, since 2013 when we were contacted um, by um, Christians in France from the Mennonite Church, and they asked us to host a, a camp here in Cape Town. We planned it, we hosted it, and we um, had, uh, I think, 25 French people that came over. 
And it was just so beautiful, and we built relationships with them, and we went to visit them. They really spoiled us, um, and we've gone back to visit them again. And so, and I know some of them are watching today as well. So, salute. Um, and then um, after that, through Pastor Kevin, um, we we met a, a fellow South African who pastors a church um, on the western side of France. Um, so we went and visited him as well. And to, to be so precise that the day that we got on the plane in February 2019 to go visit him, it was exactly a year after we received the prophetic word in February 2018 that we were, were meant to go to France. So we responded again to what God was doing, and exactly a year later we were on the plane. So um, we just really excited about the journey and the connections that God has brought our way. But also, um, during the lockdown time, um, we, we, Rudolph and myself, have really been talking about, um, even in our introduction video and everything, that it, I think it's really important to connect to a community, be, being part of a church, and growing and growing and serving and sticking your roots down. And we connected during the lockdown period, which was actually fabulous, are connected with the church in Paris. Um, so, bonjour la cité. And, um, <laughs> and um, we started um, spending some time over Zoom with some of the leadership. And we're just so excited to, to when we go over to actually just, I, I just feel like we're just going to just feel like we know them already because we, we've been spending time, we've been sharing our hearts with them. So, it won't be so foreign. So now we'll have to make rules about when we are allowed to speak English or Afrikaans. We can't just do it any days. Yeah, so those are the connections. Just some of the, some of the connections we've made. But even since 2013 when we've had all these, uh, we've had made our first connections with the, the French on the eastern side of France, we've constantly, we constantly, constantly had French people coming in and out, in and out. And then we would get a phone call, oh, we've got friends coming to South Africa, can you host them? We had another friend. There's actually um, one, of the, uh, one of the young French gentlemen in our church at the moment was actually introduced to us from our friends in France. So the connections have to, just word of mouth, oh, we've got someone in South Africa, we know someone in Cape Town, and then we would um, visit and we would just spend, share a meal together. So that's always been beautiful. Our home has always been open to any, so if I hear it, someone French, I say, bring it on. Uh, we love it. All right. So, um, sorry, I just want to quickly backtrack. Um, all right. So, obviously, now um, I've heard of, so that those are the connections that we've made, and I just little bit of my story, but I think the question on everyone's lips is, what now? What's going to happen? And um, surprise, we'll tell you. <laughs> um, I think we, we, we had our plane tickets bought. We had faith, and we bought our plane tickets, and um, our kids were so excited, and we booked our tickets for the 24th of December. We were um, went to start. Um, oh, so let me just quickly just backtrack a bit. So our plan is still to go to France, um, the, the, the essence is that we must learn the language. We cannot go to a foreign country and expect to speak English and someone, anyone will listen to us. So we really have to make an effort at learning the language. And so the plan is for us to go to a, a French language school um, just outside Paris and um, th for a year. Rid of myself have enrolled already. We've paid our deposit, most of it. And um, we will doing, be doing three to four hours of French a day, five days a week. And then we'll go to the shops and buy bread and French. And we'll go to go, uh, French bread, yes. And then we'll go on the train to Paris to visit the church in French. So we'll be, and the kids will go to French school with French teachers and French friends, so and we'll be living in a French neighborhood. So I think that's definitely just emer just emerging into it. So the plan was for us to start in January, 
And we actually wouldn't have been here now. We would have been um, in Belito. So God has given us a few extra months. Um, so I don't know if you like that or not, but we're still here. <laughs> and then um, we were meant to um, go, go to France on the 25th of December, um, the day before Christmas, land on Christmas Day. We would have gone to the eastern side of France to visit some friends and spend Christmas Day with them. Um, and then drive through to Paris, but that's obviously not happening. Borders are still closed. We meant to um, be applying for visas now, and that's obviously not happening. And I just think, you know, we can have we can have faith, and we can put our trust in God, and we can say yes, we're going to go for it. But Rudolf and myself just said we don't want to push any doors open. We don't want to put ourselves under any unnecessary pressure if we don't have to. So we said, it's fine. We'll, there's, the school takes in new students in January, May, and September. So we asked them if we can come in May. They said they're not sure where they'll be taking new students in. So obviously September is the new academic year. So it actually really just makes sense for us to start in September so that the kids can start a new academic year. So we actually really steamrolling through our homeschooling so that we can finish another academic year by June next year. So we're really doing a lot of schooling at home at the moment. Um, all right, so we're planning to go in September for a year, sorry. And then um, we really don't know what's going to happen after that. Um, we trust in God that um, by then we'll have to, whatever visas we need to apply for, God will really just open the doors. I'm really praying that our French will be absolutely magnificent and that we just can't, the, the jobs will start rolling in and they can't say no to us when we speak so beautifully. That's just what I'm praying. <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to come back to that. I just want to say, and what's, what's just been so beautiful for us is just how God has actually been speaking through our children. Um, and how they've really become a part of this journey. Um, they've been doing a little bit of French um, with a good friend of ours. Um, but not just the, the French. They've just, every time they draw a picture, they've used the colors of France. They've, um, my, our seven-year-old daughter drew a picture of a vision she had of us going to France. Um, they've been speaking through, God has been speaking to them through dreams. He's been th speaking to them through um, pictures. They've been drawing. Um, he's been speaking to them through um, dreams, visions, and pictures, yeah. And um, um, for those of you that are here, the artwork that's displayed is their pictures that they've draw drawn. And it's very significant that these, these pictures all resemble France. Um, and even Lego. Lego has even been in, uh, introduced to France play, French play, because they've been building Eiffel Towers, they've been drawing Eiffel Towers, and it's not like we've been shoving it down their throats. They've really just become... Um, they've been, and they're even dreaming about ministering themselves. Um, Henry came to us the other day, and he said that he, he's never heard of... We don't often speak about the towns in France... And he came to us the other day and he said, God, God says he's chosen me. And we said, Henry, what does that mean? He said, I don't know. So we said, let's pray about it. And he came back and he said, God has chosen me to preach the gospel in France. And, and we kind of left it and we said, wow, that's amazing. And then the next day he came to us, he says, God's told me I'm going to be a pastor in Lyon. So <laughs> he, it's a town. Uh, it's close to where Noemi grew up, uh, uh, grew up, and um, it's it's a beautiful um, area. I've never been there before, but it's, we've never really spoken about it, and it's just amazing to see how they've become a part of this journey. Um, so I just want to share with you our vision and our mission. Mission, our vision, where we are standing here today, is to see the entire France in the entire broader Europe infiltrated with the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we just really see, we just want to go and share the love of God. We just want to go and share his love. We just want to go. And that's where it comes back to Ephesians, where it says that he's given us the boldness. He's 
to go and do what he's asked us to do or where we just respond to his call. And then our mission, I think, is we, Rudolph and myself, are very, both very relational people. So um, we really, it's all about relationship. It's not about shoving, shoving something down someone's face. It's really just building a relationship and every day just saying a little bit more, saying a little bit more. And um, we've had, the, through, the, through the years, for the past 10 years, we've been seeing amazing growth in, in home groups and, um, and people coming and build, building relationships and where people actually um, invest their time and, and um, putting their roots down. And we've just seen so much growth in uh, so, many, so many friends and people's lives. So our mission is to establish strong home groups through effective discipleship and connecting with people in their own language and culture. Um, so the last thing that I just want to share is this is really just my heart and this is my prayer where I'm standing today and this is what I'm going to end off with. It just says um, my prayer is just that we will step into the calling that God has for us and where he is calling us. We are responding to his call in our human capacity and saying, here we are, Lord. Use us to shine your light into the world and always keep us grounded in your love as we put our trust in you. So thank you very much. So, so now, now I give you Rudolph. <laughs> So that created the scene now, so praise God. Thank you, my lovely wife. Um, I think she did pretty well. Um, yeah, so um, Jesus is Lord. He's Lord of all. He's King of Kings. This is what it's all about. It's about Jesus and His goodness and His grace and His mercy. To all my French friends um, in Paris and in France, Bonsoir à nos amis de France. La pastille Tim. Um, Edna Dean de Rochefort, Pasteur Fred and Vanessa de Paris, Marius and Simone de Paris, um, e e Philippe and Joy de Ballasdorf, Christian, um, e Toma and Lydia um, Ulaos, merci, um, merci de avoir regard avec nous. Um, que de vous bénis, um, vous tu, merci, merci, merci. I hope that went well, and I hope you understood me. Um, I really tried my best, and um, yeah, I was just so excited, and my wife is giving me just a big smile. Right, so thank God I'm trying. So yeah, um, what a lovely opportunity to be here with you guys today online, and to have all, everybody here with us. Um, let me just start off, I just first want to come, and I just want to honor my leaders. Um, I'm a man that believes in submission. I believe in authority, spiritual authority that's over me. Um, and I would love to, first of all, I know they're going to hate it. Um, Pastor Kevin is not here. Pastor Linda is here. I want to honor them for what they've done in my life. I think they're just my spiritual mother and father. I love you so much. And you need to know that today. I wouldn't have been standing here if it wasn't for them. And then the pastors of this church, Pierre and Maxine. Yeah, I mean, what can we say? We love you guys a lot. You're going to come and visit us in France so many times. You need to get used to French food. Parabokis, broer. All right, Frot Glex, that's what it means. All right, so um, we still need to get used to all the French food and stuff. So, yeah, um, but lovely. We really honor our leaders, and we respect them, and we thank God for putting them into our lives. And so for all our friends that's here today and that's watching online, all the way from Polokwane, and there's people in um, Polokwane, there's people here in, 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 in Fishuk, there's people in France, I don't know where else, but everybody, Bloemfontein, shoo, everybody knows who's Bloemfontein, middle of nowhere. All right, so, yeah. So let me just start off quickly. Um, I just want to, to share a bit as well from my heart. And from there, I want to go and just um, into the Word of God and, and share something quite profound and, and, and um, yeah, powerful. So I just want to start off with a scripture. Um, Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it's a power of salvation to everyone who believes. Everyone who believes. And I believe there's nothing more powerful in this world than the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's able to save any person, no matter who you are, no matter where you're at, no matter what the problems is in your life, 
It's powerful enough to save you from that situation. His name is Jesus. And I believe that God wants to do something extraordinary in the nation of France. I believe that God wants to pour out His Spirit on France. I believe that God wants to visit France in a way that France has never been visited by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's in the name of Jesus Christ, in no other name. Because the Bible says man will be saved by no other name but the name of of Jesus Christ. So we proclaim it and we declare it. And we just want to say to you today, guys, we love you. So let me go. I haven't even started preaching. I've learned it from Peary. It's his mistake. So yeah. Psalm 32 verse 8, the Lord says to David, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye upon you. That's pretty much the verse of my life. Because when I look back at my life, that's exactly what God did. He's been faithful through the ups and the downs, right? Through the good and the bad. He was dead and he's still there. Um, I got saved in 10 May 1993 in a little church in Pretoria Central. I got baptized, baptized with the Holy Spirit and with water the same year. My calling for ministry occurred soon afterwards. I remember one night I was praying. I'm going to share with you guys some of the encounters that God has had with me in the past and how significant these things are. When I look back, now because you need to understand, my journey started 25 years ago. It didn't start yesterday. France didn't come into my heart yesterday. It's 25 years ago that God already put this into my heart, this seed into my heart. And this is just, you know, what God has been doing in my life, and I'm sharing with you guys why I can stand here today. It's not through myself. It's through God's grace and through His goodness and through the working of the Holy Spirit. That's it. I'm not nothing good about me. It's all about Jesus and Him alone. All right, so I got saved, and I remember I just, I was like, I grew up in a Dutch Reformed church. I didn't know anything about the presence of God. I just know I gave my life to Jesus, all right, and one night I was praying on my bed, I was kneeling over myself, and suddenly, I love the word suddenly, because the Bible talks in Pentecost, suddenly they heard a noise, suddenly there was something, and then suddenly the room was filled with the presence of God, and as I was sitting there, I was so scared, I didn't want to open my eyes, I didn't want to look around, and I, had, I felt a hand on my shoulder, and then I just kind of freaked out, because I didn't know this. And then God started to talk to me about ministry. I just heard this voice telling me that I want to, you to be a shepherd to my people. So that's where my journey started. The next year I went um, to a place called Petersburg. It's now called Polokwane. We need to pray for you guys. You, you're really struggling with drought that side. So Lord Jesus, let's pray with him right now. Father, I pray that you open the heavens over Limpopo, Lord. I pray that it will start raining, that those dams will get filled in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for open heavens over them right now. Lord, and that that land will be watered not only with that water, but with the water of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, right now we release it, Father. We thank you right now for that, Father. So I went to this lovely, beautiful place called Polokwane. I spent eight years of my life there. Um, I call the first two years my foundational um, years because that is when I met a pastor called Pastor France de Plessy. We worked in the missionary field. I worked pretty hard. I didn't have a lot of money. I just barely survived. But those two years made me stronger than ever before. In that time, the Lord started to talk to me again about the nation of France. And, and I just want to share with you guys where it really started. It was one Tuesday evening that I was praying. And again, I felt God's presence coming into the room in such an intense way. And, and, and then the Lord took me into a vision, and I saw myself ministry in a foreign country. And that freaked me out completely because it was just like weird, Lord. And that's usually what God does. He's challenging you with weird stuff that's going to freak you out. All right, that's probably God speaking to you. All right, so if you feel like everything's just good, 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 I'm on my boat, it's fine. Yeah, pray again, all right, because Jesus will throw the boat around and cause you to walk on water. That's what he'll do. All right, he's not going to ask, he's just going to do it. So yeah, that was it. And, and the Lord gave me Ezekiel 2, where he called Ezekiel to Israel and told him, these guys are rebellious. Nevertheless, if they listen to you or not, you need to, to speak my word. And I thought to myself, okay, God, France is on my heart. It's been on my heart for such a long time. It's a Western um, first, first world country. People are very comfortable but we need to go there and preach your word. So as God gave me that scripture, I've got a very good friend there. The next evening I visited him, and his wife came to me. And she said to me, I don't know why, but last night about this time and so, I had a Bible, and I started reading the scripture. And God gave me Ezekiel chapter 2 for some reason. I think I need to give it to you. It's exactly the same time that I was having this encounter with God. God gave me the scripture. And then soon after that, for three months, God took me into a, a prophetic season, 
um, that five different people that didn't know me and I didn't even know each other, in three months, those five people came to me and each one gave me a specific prophetic word about the fivefold ministry, each one separately. And then God confirmed that. And then obviously in 2000, God opened the door for me to go back to Pretoria, where I started my, my business, where I'm still engaging in today. Um, and through this job, I eventually started um, my company that I'm now running. I met my beautiful, gorgeous wife, Sonia, in May 2007. Thank God, all right? Because I don't know where I would have been if it wasn't for her. All right, so the, the reason that I'm dressed so nicely, it's not me, it's her. All right, I can assure you, I... <laughs> She threw out my, rock, my, my rocky shoes, and she threw out all the nonsense in my house, and I don't know what else I had to go. The minute she was there, I could find nothing. Everything was just gone. All right. So, <laughs> and so I am a product of my beautiful wife today. All right. So I met her in May 2007. We got married in September, 20, uh, yeah, the 20th of September, 2008. So we're going for 12 years. Hallelujah. Okay, and then after that, after that first kiss, yeah? Come on, guys. You act like you never did it. All right, after that first kiss, all right, we found out we had so much in common. That was a French kiss, man. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and I tell you, after 12 years, the French kissing gets even better. All right, I'm going to leave that there. We've got children in the audience. Okay, <laughs> so we found out we've got so much in common about France. Um, you know, we just started speaking about things. We started going for lessons and uh, for the French language. And um, as Sonia said, we had a prophetic word just before we got married and about France. And then we moved to Fishuk in 2010. Great place to stay in. If you're not in Fishuk, come. It's a lovely place to live in. We've got beautiful beaches, beautiful sand, beautiful people. And then we joined a church called Fully's, Full Gospel Church, where we spent about approximately eight years of our lives, um, precious time in our lives. I call those the healing years. The vision of Full, Fully's was always to be a well. So you come to the well, you become well, and you become a well to someone else. All right, that's what it was. So it's a church that's known for healing and restoration in people's lives. And that happened quite significantly with me and Sonia because here's the thing, and I'm going to be very open and honest with you guys today, and I'm going to share some stuff with you that you know where I'm at and what Jesus has done in my life, not what I've done. So I had addiction of pornography for many years, and 2012, the wheels, the wheels just came off completely. Um, I had such a massive encounter with the Lord in June 2012, that lasted about three hours, um, where God just kicked all this rubbish out of me, all this addiction out of me. And, and, and after that, I went into a pit of depression that I struggled about for five or six years to get out of. Um, but in that season, God restored me completely inside from all insecurities. Jesus did a work that no man could have done, and he completely, completely, completely healed me. And all that stuff happened when we were still um, with, with, with foolies. Um, and the years there was just a time of restoration. I look back at the church today. I thank God for that church and for that season in our lives because that is where Sonia and myself were getting restored and healed. And because our marriage got through so much strain through that period that it's only the grace of Jesus and the support of the people that we can be here today. It's nothing about us, all right? So I want to thank God for that. And we can stand here and just testify about God's goodness. So then... Like Sonia said, the 6th of February 2018, we had this woman coming to our home. Um, I love her very much. I'm not going to mention her name online. But she came here. I've never met her. Okay, so she came to our house. It was Tuesday afternoon, 3 o'clock. I remember the day and the time and the hour. And she knocked on my door and she said, do you have a cup of rooibos tea for Tani, please? And I'm like, Lord, who's this woman? And she said, before you do that, you sit down. And then usually what I do is when I'm in trouble, I get my wife. So I said, Sonia, you need to come quickly, quickly. I've got this weird lady here. She's here and she's, she wants to say something. Yeah. If something at night is these noises, I say like, Sonia, go check it out. You know what I'm go say? <laughs> All right. So this woman walks in and she starts and she sat me down. and says, now you're going to listen to every word that Tani tells you. And you shut up, just like that, sorry for my language. He said, you shut up and you listen, and afterwards you tell me if it's God or not. 
Do you understand me? And my eyes were big like this, and Sonia was sitting next to me, and this woman opened her mouth. And she started telling me exactly what I'm praying. She told me what God was thinking about my prayers. She told me what God was thinking about what I want to do with those prayers. And I was just like sitting shivering. I said, Lord, what's happening here? And then she carried on, and she started telling us stuff that Sonia and myself spoke about like three, four months ago that we didn't discuss with anyone, all right? She says, God says, I... To the point, everything. When she was done with me, she turned to Sonia, and she started speaking to her. And she says, yeah, God says you guys are going to go to the nations, and she carried on. And I was like shocked. I was completely shocked. And she kept quiet for a while, and she said, yeah, Jesus tells me you guys are going to France. Like that. Pinpoint. There's my wife. She will tell you. All right. So I was completely, Lord Jesus, this is it. And then we went to Pastor Kevin and Linda, and we shared with them, and they were so supportive, and the things just started to happen from that side. Okay, so September last year, I need to share this with you guys. Um, I was diagnosed a couple of years ago with something I called Manier disease. It means like the devil is a liar, all right? Because <laughs> that's what he is. All right, and um, it affects your hearing. All right, so you lose your hearing, you get dizzy, you get vertigo attacks, and then obviously the doctor tells you, I can't do anything for you. You need to get hearing apparatus. All right, that is the end. So um, people started praying for me. Nothing really happened, and I had to like, you know, I kind of enjoyed it. I must be quite honest, because if the kids screamed at night, I liked, you know, with the good ear on the pillow and the bad ear on top. (laughs) Then I couldn't hear anything. So I kind of got in a routine like, yeah, this is actually okay, you know. But then obviously um, I said, Lord, I need my hearing for ministry. I cannot go into ministry with the ear that's half death. I, I just can't do that, Lord. And then, guys, I was driving on Chapman Speak one day. Boom. And Lord just opened my ear. It just popped open. I just like, you know, completely I've heard better than before. Um, and, and that was the start of this new journey. And then and soon after that, um, God told us that our time with Phyllis was done. And we both felt that we need to engage with Peter Maxine at Relentless Pursuit Ministries, so we did. And boy, what the ride that was. All right, so <laughs> most of you guys are laughing because you know what I'm talking about, Nick. Especially you, all right. So we came here, and um, we started joining them in September, October last year. Just after God healed my ear, they had a vision night one evening here in this church. And then um, there's a lovely French lady here that's engaged. And um, yeah, so Awesome. And then Pierre and Maxine said, oh, we're going to pray for you guys. And then um, they called and said, listen, you pray now for Rudolf and Sonia. You are French, and they're going to go there. So you give them the keys, and you invite them as a French citizen into the spiritual realm, into your nation. Boy, when, she, when he said that, I just felt like something is moving in me right now, all right? And yeah, and the next minute, guys, I'm not lying. There's many people that were with us tonight in this building. They were here. As Peter started praying for me, it's like something hit me in the stomach, and I just went. I nearly went through the wall, the back wall, all right? Truce, okay? Can I hear an amen that the people can hear? Okay, I'm not, I'm not making this up. All right, they thought I was dead. Okay, they thought I was dead. All right, so I also thought I was going to die. But that encounter, Jesus took all religion out of me. All right, I cannot think religiously. I don't, I don't want any religion. I want Jesus. I want relationship because religion will kill you. Jesus will make you alive. That's what it's about. All right, so God break that down. And I had several more encounters. Just after that, I had a night. God spoke to me in an audible voice. I had a dream, and I woke up with a woman screaming for help. And it was so desperate that I woke Sonia up after seven times and says, this, someone is getting killed. You must go and help someone. And she said, this, I haven't heard anything. And we have a WhatsApp group, and I asked the people about it. Nobody heard anything. And I went and prayed, and I just felt God's presence coming over me. And the Lord said to me, I've opened your spiritual eyes for the the inspiration of my voice for the nation of France. I am desperate for that people. And so on, we had encounters of the Lord that changed us constantly, and God kept on challenging us with dreams and revelations and visitations. The last one we had was in the beginning of July, where, where, God, where God just sent the angel straight forward into our dining room. I mean, we were just like talking about finances, and you know, after the corona, the lockdown, and financial issues, we just laid it before God. I promise you guys, after that encounter that we had, 
I received my best month in five years, work-wise, after that. The work is still coming in. My, my family is, is going AY, and my kids are seeing visions and dreams. My kids are prophesying. My wife is, is worshiping Jesus in the front. My, things just excelled in our lives. After that one account, I want to say to you, you don't need religion. You need an encounter with Jesus. Because the encounter with Jesus is going to do what religion never will do in your life. If you want things changed, get to the feet of Jesus. Get in contact with Jesus. When Jesus rocked up, things changed. When that guy was at that bath of Bethesda for 38 years of infirmity, the day that Jesus walked in, that man stood up and he ran out. You need an encounter with Jesus. You don't need a nice sermon. You don't need a nice time of worship. You don't need another someone to lay hands on you. You don't need theological discussions. You need Jesus and Jesus only. And Jesus will set you free. The words of God says, if the Son of God sets you free, you will be free indeed. France needs Jesus. This world needs Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus. He is the solution. He is the answer to each and everything. I haven't even started preaching. <laughs> you guys okay? So I was at the encounter, yeah. And then everything changed. Let me get into the word. So, <laughs> psalm 23. All right, we know the psalm very, very well. All right, so um, do you guys watch, the, have you watched the Titanic? Okay. That, that, that priest, when that water thing was going down, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. And then I went under. All right, everybody always pulls out Psalm 23 if they're in trouble. Am I right? I've done it. Okay? If, if there's problems, that's the first verse that comes to your mind is Psalm 23. But I just want to get into it quickly. I'm not going to be long because I believe the entire gospel of Jesus Christ is in these six verses. All right? And I want to share that with you quickly. Um, if I look at David, I, I think David wrote this psalm at the end of his life because he had experience. You can see it's someone that has experience with God that wrote this psalm. All right, he's been through some stuff, right? Have you been through some stuff? Okay, good. So he's been through some stuff, and he, and he got to, there's another thing. You get to know your God when you go through some stuff. All right, if you don't go through anything, you cannot say that you're going to know Jesus. You get to know him on your knees. You get to know him in the valleys, not on the mountaintops. You get to know him when it's getting hard. You get to know him when you're all by yourself, when you need to stand alone. That's when you get to know him. David was alone in the field when the bear tried to steal his sheep. So he get to know his God. All right? He knew where Jesus was. He knew his God was. That's why he faced Goliath. That's why he wasn't scared of Goliath, because he had experience with God. See, I have experience with God. I will not be afraid of anything that comes my way. Now, David is writing this psalm, and he's pinpointing everything in his life, and he's writing this beautiful piece of Scripture for us due to the experience that he had. Now, remember, he was a shepherd, and he had sheep, but he had replaced himself as a sheep, and God as a shepherd. Now, all right, I'm not really, I'm not going to try to, to um, be personal or be ugly, but I just want to say three things about sheep quickly. All right, first of all, sheep are stupid. Okay, amen. Do not be offended. God calls us sheep more than 500 times in the Bible. So over 500 times, he tells us you're stupid. That's what he's doing. That's not what I'm saying. You can go and read it in the Scripture. It's all there. He calls us sheep, all right, because a sheep is stupid. It cannot think for itself. It cannot do anything for itself. It's completely useless. It's completely helpless. If there's no one that's helping that sheep, that thing will probably just die right there, all right? That's it, and it calls us sheep, okay? I've seen trained animals in the circus. I've seen a trained um, lion. I've seen a trained um, elephant. I've seen all these trained stuff. I've never seen a trained sheep in my entire life. <laughs> if you find one, tell me, okay? Because it's a miracle, all right? Sheep are stupid, okay? Amen? So I don't call you stupid. God says you're sheep over 500 times in the Bible, okay? Secondly, sheep are dirty, all right. They say they, all their wool always was like in this dusty stuff and all these things got tagged to, to this wool. And, you know, it was just a dirty animal, all right, full of dust. And then lastly, they are defenseless. All right. If it's going to get attack, attacked by something, it's going to bark? No. All right. This is this, this real. I mean, in Israel, they say it's this, this, um, this, this um, ravens come and sit on, on the sheep's head and then it plucks out his eyes. He can't do anything. He's defenseless. 
Now, David says, the Lord is my shepherd. Can you see how we need a shepherd if we sheep? First of all, we're stupid. We do stupid things. Like, have you ever done something like myself? How could I have done this? Oh, what did I just do? Because you're stupid. <laughs> the Bible said so. All right? So you need someone to give you direction. Okay, I've sinned. I'm dirty. Am I right? I'm dirty. I'm full of sin. I need someone to clean me. I need a shepherd. I am defenseless. I cannot defend myself. I need a defender. I need a savior. His name is Jesus. He's my shepherd. All right. So that's the background of it. Now the Bible says, he leads me to quiet waters and he makes me lie down. Guys, I'm going to be quickly on this one. All right. If that, baby, that, that son of mine, all of you have children, you don't ask your kids to go to bed. You tell them to go to bed. Am I right? Okay, because that child will drop dead 3 o'clock in the morning only if you, don't, if you leave him, all right? You tell him because he needs rest. Now, if you say the Lord is my shepherd, he will make you lie down. He doesn't ask your permission, all right? So he might bring something over your life to slow you down. He might bring like an isolation period or a corona period. You need to slow down. You need to lie down. He doesn't ask your permission for that, all right? And that's what the Bible says he's doing. He leads me. Sheep in New Zealand and Australia, what they do is they go in front and the shepherd goes after them. In Israel, the sheep goes behind him because he leads them. It's a different story. Now, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me, the Bible says. He restores my soul. That means he disciplined my soul. It's not like he That means discipline. So what they did is when the sheep was like disobedient because he's stupid, all right, he left the flock and he walked out, and then the, the, the shepherd will go behind him and he will go and grab him and say, ah, you don't do it again. And when he does it the second time, he will break his leg, literally break his leg, so he can't do it. So he's disciplining him. He restores him. That's what he did. And that's what the Lord does with us as well if we don't listen. If we don't want to hear we need to feel sometimes. He's chastising us. He's loving us. That's why he's doing it. He wants to protect you. I'm nearing the end quickly here. You go through the valley of the shadow of death. The Bible says, guess what? If you're a Christian, you're going to have bad times as well. It's in the Bible, all right? You say, I don't want bad times. Well, the Bible says you're going to. John 16, 33, Jesus says, I have overcome this world. You will have many tribulations, many tribulations, but I have overcome this world. Acts 14, 22, with, through, through many sufferings you will, and many pains and tribulations, you will endure the kingdom of God. The Bible is full of these things. We're going to go through bad times. We're going to go through the valleys. We're going to go through hard times. But then the Lord comes and he says the following, I prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. What does that mean? If you go and do a bit of history and you see how, the, how, how in those times what it worked, the sheep will be taken by the shepherd to green fields. You had two types of, types of, of shepherds. You had the rookie shepherd and you had a, a veteran one. So what the rookie shepherd will do is he will chase the whole flock of sheep into this green field without thinking twice. But the rookie shepherd won't. He will leave them and say, stay, sheep, stay. Don't be stupid, stay. And then he'll go into the field. He'll take his rod and there's little holes in the grass and he will put his rod and he'll close everything because in those times, there's some of these very poisonous adder snakes that lives underneath the ground. And if you just chase the sheep in there, these snakes are going to bite them. Now he says, I'll prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. So what Jesus did is he went for us and he closed all those holes down. And now he's leading us into this place. He's protecting us. So in the presence of your unbelief, in the presence of your fears, in the presence of your, 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 your worst nightmares, your worst fears, or your worst failures and disappointments, He's still preparing the table. You see, any time you say, Lord, take my enemy away. Lord, take my challenge away. He says, no, you're going to feast in the presence. I want your enemies to see how I'm blessing you. I want your enemies to see what I can do for you. I want your enemies to see how great I am. Jesus wants to show your enemies how great he is in your life. My question tonight to everyone that's listening to my voice is the Lord your shepherd? Who's your shepherd tonight? 
Who do you follow? Jesus says, my sheep knows my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Who is giving input in your life? What are you following tonight? Are you following anything else but Jesus Christ? Because if you're not following Jesus, the end of your way is death. The Bible is clear. Who does not have the Son has got no life. Who has the Son has got eternal life. And I want to create the opportunity tonight for somebody tonight that's listening to me to give your life over for Jesus. This is not an emotional decision. This is a life decision. This is going to change your life forever. You need to count the cost tonight to say, I want Jesus. You need to know it's going to cost you everything. It cost Paul everything. It cost Peter everything. But they gained Christ and they gained so much more. It can cost you everything tonight if you make that decision, but you're going to gain eternal life. You're going to gain a life with Jesus Christ, and you'll never be the same. He'll wash your sins away. he wash your guilt away. He can heal you. He can restore you. He can lift you up like you've never been lifted up. But first, you need to humble yourself before Jesus tonight. He paid the price on the cross. He died on that cross, and He rose again as King of kings and Lord of lords. And that's why we can stand here tonight. That's why you can come tonight in just as you are and say, Jesus, I am in need of you. I'm lost. I'm like a dumb, stupid sheep tonight, trying my own ways, trying my own thinking, trying my own plans, and it's not working. I need a shepherd. I'm dirty. I need to be cleansed. I'm defenseless. I need to be protected. I need to be clothed. I'm coming, Lord. Here I am. The Father is running to you tonight. He's embracing you tonight, and He wants you to come home. And if you're listening to me tonight and say, Rudolf, that's me. I need Jesus in my life. I want to do a prayer for you tonight. I want to encourage you. If you're in France, wherever you are, go to your local pastor. Go to someone that can sit down with you and walk a road with you. You can even, in, even send us a, a, a message on our Facebook page. And, you know, you can go to Mission Possible or you can go to Relentless Pursuit Ministries Facebook. And we will contact you. Let me just pray for you. Let's just pray at this moment. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, Lord. And I'm not coming to you in an emotional decision and say, Lord Jesus, just, just come into my heart. No, Lord, I come and I repent of everything in my life that's wrong. Father, everything that shouldn't be in my life, everything, God, that is not pleasing to you tonight, Lord. I don't care what it is, Father. Whatever it might be, we surrender it to Jesus Christ tonight. And I pray right now, Spirit of God, that you will intervene. I pray right now that the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all iniquity. I pray right now, Father, that you walk into that person's room, into that person's life, in the name of Jesus, and encountering that person that we're praying right for now. And I pray, Father, that life will never be the same as from this moment. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, I pray that people will get born again right now as we pray. In Jesus' name, for a transformation, for a new creation to come to the front. In the precious name of Jesus. We accept you, Lord. We, we want to serve you, God. We give you our whole, whole life. Thank you that you forgive me. Thank you, Lord, that you help me to walk this road to discipleship with Jesus, to become more like Jesus. Right now, Holy Spirit, we welcome you into our lives, and we pray that you lead us all the way forward in Jesus' precious name. Friends, I just want to say, if you pray that prayer with us, just go and see someone. Someone can walk with you Someone can pray for you. It's lovely to have you tonight with us. Um, It's lovely to share some time with you tonight. And, And it's lovely just to tell you the good news. Jesus Christ is Lord. Take courage and be strong in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Hey, come on. Isn't God so good? I I love their stories, you know, and I love I love that the kids are here too. Because they're clearly they own the stage. Uh, that song we sang at the beginning, uh, Fear Get Away, Fear Get Away From Me, uh, I actually wrote because of Luca, because of um, their son. He, we were doing a video for, during lockdown, and he started singing Devil, Devil Get Away From Me. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a song. So I wrote a whole song about it. And so it's really, really powerful that when kids start encountering Jesus, that it, it's so real. And uh, I love that. So I love this family. They are so special to us. And so, obviously, they, they are going to go to France, and we will release them and, uh, and watch over them and, and just love on them. And so, um, I want to encourage you, spend time with them and take them for coffee, hang out with them. 
and hear everything on all the stories. And I'm so thankful that Rudolph didn't roll around tonight. Usually when he touches the mic, he starts rolling. People, when we pray for him, we pack the chairs away because we know he's going to roll. So uh, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> maybe tomorrow. But uh, uh, before I say goodbye to everybody that's online, if you did give your life to Jesus, you can email us at info at relentlesspursuit.org.za. Um, and uh, yeah, just let us know if you gave your life to Jesus so we can follow up with you. And then uh, I want to pray for us and close. And then um, those of us that are here in the room, we're going to continue celebrating this beautiful family. And so uh, let's, stretch our, let's stretch our hands out to the live stream and just everybody watching. Father, we thank you for every person that is watching. Right now, Lord, I, I declare that the name of Jesus is more powerful than any disease. And Father, if there's anybody watching this, whether you're in another nation, another country, another city, another room, Jesus is able to heal you. And Jesus is able to set you free of every disease, every sickness, every stronghold. And Father, right now in Jesus' name, we, re we even rebuke the spirit of death, God. We rebuke cancer in Jesus' name. If you've got cancer in your body, we rebuke it in Jesus' name. And Father, every disease, God, every sickness, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we break its power and we declare that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is King over every person's life. Lord, and we thank you that you are a good God who loves us with all your heart. And so, Lord, we just bless every person in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. I got drunk from just hearing Sarah's feet go around me. Goodness, my girl. So uh, let's say goodbye to everybody online. Thank you for watching and tuning in. And please share this post around. And uh, let me do this. You want to say something? Okay. I will eat say. But uh, yeah, please share this post around and, and let's, uh, let's invite people. You can check out their Facebook page, sign up to their newsletter and be a part of it. So we're going to say goodbye to everybody online. We love you guys and have a beautiful evening. Everybody in France, uh, I won't say anything in French because it will it'll, it'll sound like I'm praying in tongues. Au revoir, what? Wieso oral is skief, what? Nee, ek kan nie die goed uitspreek nie. I'll just pray in tongues. Is that okay for you? Okay. Well, we bless you guys. Have a beautiful evening. And uh, yeah, thank you. Awesome.